It was an all-out battle at the uh, box office this weekend. We are the Turkey Freedom Front. We have one week to pull off our most important assignment yet. To get turkeys uh, uh, off the Thanksgiving menu. And there you go. Freebird soared to third place, bringing in an estimated $11.1 .1 million during its second week at the box office. The uh, 3D Kids film features voice work by Owen Wilson and Woody Harrelson. This thing doesn't work. Oh, God. Nothing. Oh, oh, oh. And Jackass Presents Bad Grandpa held on to second place. The uh, hidden camera comedy stars Daredevil Johnny Knoxville. The film brought in about $11.3 million. I've got this completely under control. Is that why everything's on fire? And it was a, a superhero sequel that conquered the competition at the box office. Thor The Dark World opened with an estimated $86.1 million this weekend. The film has brought in more than $180 million worldwide. Jason Gorber is a, a film critic with uh, TwitchFilms.com uh, and joins us now. Hey, Jason, how you doing? I'm good, Scott. How are you? Good, good. D do you uh, like Thor? I love Thor, actually. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. You're in such a better mood than last week oh, when yeah, everything week was, was bad. <laughs> last week was terrible. Here's the deal. I'm the guy that doesn't like Avengers. I know Avengers made $200 billion, but... The deal with Avengers is that the story was so big and so epic, and fundamentally I realized that I just don't care about normal superheroes. But there's something great about a bunch of Asgardian gods battling it out. I'm totally all over. Look, this Thor, even more so than the other one, is not even pretending to be anything other than a weird Lord of the Ringsy Marvel movie. I mean, there's a 10-minute prequel, uh, sort of a voiceover narration that explains everything about dark elves and stuff. And you're like, okay, I'm going to sit back and kind of enjoy this. And when you have bigger-than-life characters here that are fundamentally immortal, at some point in time, you actually stop caring when they start beating each up each other because you're like, well, that guy's going to live because he's got to live as the main character. And this other guy, well, you can't really kill him because he's kind of incredibly strong. But when it's done within this big, epic, mythic uh, scenario that Thor effectively does, for me, it works a little bit better. I think my nerdiness works better within this kind of fantasy than it does in the superhero fantasy. And so for me, it's not quite as good as the first Thor film, but it's a lot of fun. Uh, the, the, the actors really know what they're doing. There's a lot of pretty people doing a lot of really interesting things. And uh, the, the director's really interesting. He's one of these, uh, Alan Terry, he's an HBO guy um, who's done some amazing work on television, and the translation to feature film is uh, really effectively done. Remember, the first Thor was done by Kenneth Branagh. So, Plaudits to um, Marvel and Disney for choosing really interesting directors, interesting performers to actually bring these bigger-than-life stories to the, to the screen. Uh, next movie, uh, The Book Thief. Yeah, so here's a film that totally didn't work for me. This is a beloved book. And mm -hmm. look, Crystal Knox's uh, anniversary was, I guess, on Saturday. Um, it's definitely uh, the story of the Holocaust. It's one that has many uh, iterations that can be told. This is the, the story of an illiterate girl who's raised by uh, a German couple, uh, and uh, she, she steals books, one of her proclivities. But it's basically the story of, of uh, little choices that one makes to try to, within a corrupt system, what kind of choices can you make to try to better oneself? Um, as a film, it didn't feel that it was deep enough for a subject matter, and it wasn't light enough to be super interesting. I described it in my uh, former review as more a pamphlet than a book. It, it feels like a young adult novel version of German history, and because of that, you're comparing it to so many better films that have done similar things in a much more effective way. You have great performers not really living up to their capacities, and as, as a film, it does entirely work. I'm sure as a book, it's quite wonderful, but as a film, it just felt a little bit slight, and there's much better things for you to actually go out and experience this uh, holiday season. A Canadian actress in this movie, and, and I read that uh, they auditioned just about everyone yeah. before they picked her. Yeah, whenever you have like a really juicy role like this, like a prime acting role for a, a young actor or actress, um, absolutely casting goes off the roof. And again, she's fabulous in it. It's just that the film doesn't really engender itself to the sort of sophistication that I wanted from it. It's not that I needed it to be so heavy or dour. 
it's just it didn't come together in the way that I really wanted it to. There are people that will appreciate it, but honestly, in the end, despite having, I mean, Emily Watson's one of my favorite actresses ever, um, it, it just does not rise to the level that I think it could have. Uh, we were supposed to get to this last week, uh, Dallas Buyers Club. Right. Here's another one which is super interesting. You have powerhouse performers in a story which should be incredibly compelling, and yet it doesn't quite match the, mesh the way it should. Nonetheless, expect lots and lots and lots of people to give notice to Matthew McConaughey in this and Jared Leto. You have two people that have gone through physical transformations, and you know full well at awards time, whenever somebody does something as crazy and probably death-defying as losing 40 pounds extremely quickly and then go on screen to yeah, portray a character that's, that's the kind of that thing that is incredible yeah yeah so he's he is amazing in it it's a really interesting and an undertold story um, the whole AIDS uh, crisis and the history of it especially in the mid 80s is definitely undertold it's it's there's some controversy about whether or not this is a story that should be told but nonetheless I think it's worth seeing I think the performances are quite extraordinary but I just think the film is a little bit over long and a little bit over drawn out but as performances expect at awards time people to be talking about this film People can follow you at uh, filmfest underscore ca. Jason, thank you very much. Have a great week. Thanks, Scott. See you next week.